Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I haven't recorded just recording for a while. It's with workshops and masterclasses and things like that. So this is quite exciting. I'm just going to talk to myself for a little while. And this is because nobody has asked me to make this video. Don't you find it funny? People are always like, I had so many requests for this. So I thought I'd give it to you. Well, I've had no requests for this, but I wanted to do it anyway. <laughs> And that is to talk about my no spend year. So 2022 has been my year of less. I am, I'm a minimalist. I'm, I've probably been a minimalist for a while now, but this was the first year where I really felt like, where going into the beginning of this year, I was like, I feel like I can own that label now. I feel like confident in it. I feel confident in my definition of what that means. And that still means that I have things. I mean, this, this little piece right behind me is actually for sale. Um, <laughs> it's just on display here because uh, it's cold and wintry in the garage where I store a lot of the other things. Um, the other ones are wrapped up and it looks pretty bad. And um, so that's for sale, but I still have things in my life. Um, but it was the first year where I was really like, I feel comfortable calling myself a minimalist now. Um, but I wanted to really go like a big push into I guess cinching down what was so utterly key in my life and um so I was like it's going to be my year of less the most sort of I'm going to have is my no spend rules which is what I'm mainly going to talk about today um but also I'm going to basically try and make everything I touch less so whether I touch it physically metaphorically uh virtually mentally <laughs> all the things um I want to see if there's a lesser way that I can do this thing. Can I do it with less money? Can I do it? Can I make it take up less space? Can I do it with less alarms on my phone? Um, can I use less energy? Can I like, how can I do this less, but in a way that still creates the same or more joy and happiness? So less everything else, more joy and happiness everything else was everything else needed to be less and um I did for the first couple of months I kept a bit of a journal of things um I've still got it somewhere but things that I had touched and made less um and I might add to that see if I can sort of remember through but a lot of things going on this year <laughs> so I didn't stay completely on top of that it was a good motivation at the start it really helped me get into the mindset so if this is you're like this sounds like a great thing to do I would um, encourage you to maybe do that journaling at the beginning um, and if you find that you're still being able to maintain the habit without doing the journaling then do that that's up to you and um, it would have been quite handy I could have had all the things that I've reduced scrolling down the screen as we go um, which I might, I, might, I might if there's some words appearing on the screen at this point um, scrolling then these are some of the things that I have been able to reduce over the year and um, but obviously a big part of less is finances and financial situation and and spending less because when we buy less we are spending less and um, if we sell lots of our stuff we are gaining in the financial department and um, so that was obviously going to be a key part of it I have been historically bad with money and I didn't realize I don't think until I did my no spend yet how bad <laughs> I've been in the past and I've been very lucky that I've been very good at work and um, but when your ability to work is taken away suddenly it becomes a lot trickier and um, so previously it didn't really matter because I was just living for me now I also live for my daughter um, and it, it didn't matter when I didn't have those commitments and those kind of things and I could sort of it didn't matter if it peaked and troughed and I just spent to what I had but actually when you've got a baseline of commitments you can't spend to what you have to such fluctuations you need to be curtailing the peaks so that, that when the drops low you've got a bit more of that income now I have worked for myself pretty much since I was 19 I my first like career um, I did work for someone, but I was head of my own department and I was basically left alone as long as I was making the money, um, which was really nice. And uh, when I was 22, something like that, anyway, um, I shifted into doing freelance and that kind of sort of spiraled. And actually, 
I, I can't, I really struggle working for other people. Um, I can do, I can like freelance um, or I can do, uh, as long as I'm able to control my working environment, it's not so much working for other people because obviously I have clients, I work with people. Um, but it is, yeah, it's very much that definition for me of working for as opposed to working with. And if I've got a boss that I can work with, then it works. Um, but also I very much, um, my autism and my ADHD I need to be predominantly in my own environment um and I'm I'm very smart not afraid to admit that I've got what, very high IQ actually um, thank you very much. um I am of like extreme intelligence or something I can't remember what the bracket's called but it's pretty high um and I'm I've got good common sense and I've um I don't necessarily remember scientific facts and figures so school was fun um but I'm pretty damn smart and I'm a very hard worker. I've got a very good work ethic. It just, I need to be in my environment to do it. <laughs> um, and also I struggled with agoraphobia at the beginning of this year. I had a bit of illness last year. Um, when I first had my daughter and I suddenly that limits you because you're like growing a human, giving birth to a human, recovering from giving birth to a human. Um, and then you have to work around childcare or work with a small human on your lap which I did quite a bit as well um I took her to client sessions with me um and luckily good egg um so that worked but it definitely has slowly sort of started to know that I wasn't going to be able to weather the peaks and troughs as much um and that I had this baseline and that actually I wanted to have this baseline as low as possible to build up my buffers again because I'd used up my buffers during maternity leave and having like some extra time off with her I had really bad pregnancy anxiety so I stopped working a bit earlier than you normally would because I was struggling to leave the house <laughs> um and then obviously through having her and tried to extend that as long as possible which would have been fine and as I was really starting to get back into it COVID hit um which is problematic obviously um because then childcare and everything changed and the uh, the incomes that people had to spend changed and all of that everything shifted um so I hit a point where I was about to refill the coffers and this crisis happened and then I've had a health issue over, like that's really flared up over the last year um and that's slowly getting under control um and things like that so it's it's been a chuckle it's been a chuckle so if anything this was the best time to do this <laughs> which wasn't so I started thinking about doing this in July 2021 uh, I didn't know it was an actual thing then so now I've searched on YouTube for like no spend year no spend rules and I didn't realize when I was like I'm gonna do a year of less and write some no spend rules I didn't know that that was a thing and now I've read loads of the books around it my year of less um no spend rules is the book club book in the membership for um, November, December. So I'm just about to finish that up and we'll be recording my book review for that in the next couple of days as well. Um, but before I didn't know, I didn't know it was a thing. Um, and I said, I didn't have massively strong rules for my year of less. It was just a case of, I wanted everything apart from happiness and joy to be less. Um, so if it could, if I could spend less money on it, if I could do it in less time or use less physical resources and very sort of environmentally aware as well. So if I could impact the planet less, that was another less, all these letters, lots of letters, uh, simplifying, all that kind of thing. And um, so I put together, I've actually printed up another copy because I want to keep, make sure I keep one on file. So this was what I put together for my new spend rules for 2022. And um, so I had four main columns and I had my can buy new items, my can buy but not new items, my can't buy and my reduce. And then I had some bonus rules. Now, the thing about the can't buy, because I was talking this through with the journalist the other day and I was like, it's not that I could buy anything that wasn't in the can't buy. It was that basically I couldn't buy anything unless it was in the can buy but there were a few gray area things that I'd have taught myself into had I not specifically called them can't buy items. So I really wanted to make sure that these were, so basically I couldn't buy anything that wasn't in either of the can buy lists, but this was kind of like another sort of like 
definitely not I'm definitely not these things these things do not fall into any of these categories like it was it was basically reiterating the point it was know thyself <laughs> and um thyself needed an, an, some extra can't buy things because otherwise I've been like oh this is an essential and it's not an essential at all um and I found it quite therapeutic as well, going through and looking at the stuff that I had and thinking what was probably going to wear out within the year so that I could in advance allow myself to have that if I needed to. I'm just going to sneeze. Or not. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'll take that as a moment to have a piece of my drink as well. Lovely though. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, it was really, really interesting to go through and like what was going to wear out and um, and set my set my like rules. <laughs> and this has been this is actually a, I had a bigger one. I had an A3, which I will show in a minute because I've drawn on it. I had an A3 one pinned up on my wall. Oh, yeah. And I've gone for an A4 one this year and, and I've just made it more pretty. So. Ta -da! Made it more pretty. Um, so if you're in my membership, I will pop a copy of mine. I don't think there's anything massively personal on here that I can't share. No, fine. I will pop a copy of mine in the downloadable section so you can have a look um, and use it as a bit of a template if you want. So if you're in the member section, there's loads of downloadables and printables and stuff. And sometimes I share my own personal work in there as well as a bit of inspiration for things. So I will pop a copy of this in there as well. Um, I did a similar format. I've got my can buy new, my can buy not new, my can't buy, my reduce and my bonus rules. And I've just sort of laid it out slightly differently. And I've put some color on it this year because I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to. And our black ink always runs out before the color ink. So I might as well use some color occasionally. Um, so this is the actual copy. This is the physical one that was stuck on my wall. And then what I've done at the end of the year is I took my little fine liners, Fine liners and sharpies, they bring me a lot of joy. And um, that's certainly not something I wanted to reduce. Um, and I made myself a little color coding at the bottom um, and it was pink, successful and keep. So I was successful at achieving this thing. Purple, successful, not keeping. Um, blue was like slipped up. My orange was can buy, but only when my credit card is cleared. So there are certain things for next year that I've put in a little caveat box that I can buy them if I clear my credit card. Um, so they're important. They're not important enough to be go into more debt for, but they are important enough that I can have them before I've hit my savings targets. If that makes sense. Um, uh, my I had an allowing in 2023 and removing for 2023 as well. And there was a bit of crossover with these things because obviously successful not keep is kind of also the same as as not allowing in 2023 too. Um, but I went through each one and I put its little colour coded asterisk next to it to express um how I felt about it. And I was actually quite um successful in not keep there's there's quite a few things that I didn't actually like food and drink was in the can buy like I can we can do that car fuel we had to do that um walking boots and running trainers my walking boots like died a death this time last year so I knew I needed some more ones but I have just about managed in my wellies this year and um, because I haven't been out as much however my ankles aren't fabulous I do like going on walks and I do like going on walks on uneven terrain so at some point I will need to get walking boots um because I haven't been out as much this year because of the agoraphobia um I didn't need to I didn't actually end up buying them I know which ones I want um so I will probably get those at some point this year and finances allow uh, my running trainers again I didn't run as much this year as I was expecting to so I didn't actually need to replace my running trainers um, I will only replace those when they've fallen apart. I imagine they will probably need replacing towards the latter part of next year based on my running goals for next year. Um, swimming costume. I was allowed to buy myself a swimming costume. Ended up actually getting a brand new one for free, courtesy of Legoland, um, because they had some errors on their websites. And um, 
a nice little artistic meltdown in the customer service room and the lady took pity on me and gave me and my daughter both of which we needed we we're going to need suit mutant in costumes at some point this year because mine had completely gone see-through and all the elastic had gone and it wasn't staying up anymore when I swam and so yeah that was a success and I didn't actually end up buying one and it just I got given a brand new one which was nice and basically the exact sort of one I would have bought so that's amazing and um, and then there's a few things that, uh, that I did um so we had things like re uh, replacing essential items that break if they can't be found second hand and I don't think we really had anything that I couldn't get second hand in the end sometimes you'd have to buy a part so you'd buy a little part new to be able to repair a bigger thing and um, and we were allowed we allowed for that but um that was fine um so yeah just sort of going through I've, I've reduced down further my skincare routine and my makeup routine but also I've got some bits of makeup and I know people are like oh you should change your makeup every six months or whatever I don't use it enough to care it's never given my skin a flare-up but my face isn't falling off for using slightly out-of-date makeup so it's not it's just not something I'm going to worry about, to be honest, because I predominantly um, just draw my eyebrows on. <laughs> I mean, uh, push, I actually think I might have some mascara on now, um, and the rest of it is a slight blurred filter. And that's what I use for my concealer. <laughs> Let me show on camera and not in person. Um, so yeah, I've actually, there's things on there that I, I, I won't need. Um, I won't need to change, I won't need any more eyeshadows this year. I won't need a new eyebrow pencil because I've got one. Um, one can if I lose it then could be in trouble but I just plan on not using it and um, things like that so that's fine um, and yeah there's a couple of bits that I've uh, like I had a hair cut and colour I was going to allow myself but actually I decided at the beginning of the year that I was not going to colour my hair anymore and I was just going to let the grey come through and to be honest I thought I'd be really grey by now and I'm not it's there it's definitely there but I just don't care anymore and it's not a huge amount, and I don't you won't be able to see it on camera now anyway. But um if I was lighter colored hair, I'd probably cared less sooner. <laughs> really dark hair. And um yeah, I don't care. And this is yeah, I haven't dyed my hair um all year, which is lovely. Um so there's that. Uh summer pedicures. I was gonna treat myself to a pedicure for the summer. Um didn't bother. Well, didn't end. Um, so little things, it's funny, the things that I was like, oh, I won't survive the winter at the summer without a pedicure, and didn't get a pedicure done. Um, so that was quite good. And um, my can buy but not new list pretty much stays the same, um, with one exception of home furnishings. We've not long lived here um, when I was writing these, and we had a few bits to make it function that we still needed. However, I think from writing these, I don't actually think, I think we bought the unit, the TVs on, but it was five pounds. And then I upcycled it with paint we already had. Um, and I sold what we were using. No, no, I, my sister had it. My sister had it, so I didn't sell what we were using, but I will have sold a piece of furniture at some point this year that was more than a fiver. I mean, I upcycle furniture as part of work, but um, uh, with my partner and, um, but th there'll have been something, there's something I, I've, I've that's more ours as opposed to an upcycle project that I'll have sold this year. And there will have been the fiver. So there we go. They counter each, balance each other out. And that was, yeah, anyway, still second hands. Um, and then, my cart buys, we've got a couple that have moved on to the credit card thing. Like if I want to pay my credit card off, I will get. Um, but all bar one of those was successful, which is good. Um, I was no new subscriptions, but actually I did for work and um, have to do a couple, not permanently, maybe like the odd month here or month there. And I have signed up to my Zoom subscription again because I do need that. I need that more than 40 minute thing for work. And I also need more than one person in and stuff. So um, the subscriptions have all been work based. Oh, I, Father Christmas has done one. 
but it's for something we eat so it actually falls under food and drink it's just cheaper to sign up on the subscription so i'm pretty sure that doesn't count either anyway i'm i'm actually removing that as a can't buy for next year i think i'm just ingrained in me that i just won't um but actually if it does make things easier with work then um or fe physically feasible with work then i will still do those and um, but it was doing that that then led me on to creating my 2023 rules so um this year i've broken them into sections so each of my columns then has life clothing cosmetics gifts and miscellaneous um but then in like can buy but not new there's nothing in cosmetics nothing in miscellaneous anyway can't buy there's nothing in life stuff so life is like food rent bills that kind of stuff there's nothing i can't buy for basic life living um clothing i i'm out no clothing for me again this year um i got like given a few bits like really lovely um from my partner's sister she's amazing um and that just kind of like I didn't I didn't need anything else. I've still got more. I'm doing a three month rotation on my wardrobe. So um I have two seasons within the spring summer wardrobe and two seasons and I'll go through and like shop for my box again of things so I can swap a couple of bits out but not have too much out out out. Um and then my reduce things I would like to reduce packaging of any kind. Subscriptions has stayed in the reduce section, but it's just not in the can't buy section. Um, big brands opting for small businesses, opting for pre-made, including, um, so no pre-made uh, things, We're trying to reduce pre-made things, including pre-made food, so making things from scratch. Um, and then I adapted some of my rules. So one of my ones that I did, and I think if just if you're trying to be better at not spontaneously buying stuff, this is quite a good one. Um, so I had two that really helped with that ones. Only replace items. Um, when they run out but decide if they need replacing um, or if we have something else that will work so if something essential an essential item we use a lot breaks is there something else that we could actually use instead of it that's what that means um, that's apparently I've worded it really long in a really long way on this one and then last year it was wait 72 hours before deciding to replace a um, irreparable broken item it's now 96 hours so I have to wait even longer to be honest I think most of the time by the time I got to the end of the year I was it was like a good week before I did that but I kind of wanted to have a minimum um uh wish list items that's the other one that I've kept that I'm that I've put wish list items need to be on my wish list for at least 14 days so if there's something I think is a can buy that, that falls into the can buy columns and I want it and it's on my wish list and um, it has to be there for at least 14 days and that includes like if people want to get me gifts um I uh actively discourage it <laughs> like actively passionately discourage it um I'd much rather the ple pleasure of your company um and or donate it to charity or something like that uh but if people really really insist then it has to be something that's on my wish list for at least 14 days because I did used to find that I'd suddenly like oh I should throw a load of stuff on my wish list because it was Christmas or birthday and actually then I'd have more than enough on the list and loads of it would be things I didn't really want or need and you still have to deal with it you still have to manage the item you still have to take care of the item you still have to have the storage space to store the item um it's still just because it's a gift still doesn't mean it's not got a lot of strings attached to it and things that you're gonna have to do um so all in all I found it really helpful um one of the big observations that I made early on it was glad something I went with was calling it my no spend rules as opposed to my low spend rules um and this is sort of highly debated <laughs> such a simple thing but debated um of whether like when you've got kids and stuff is no sp a no spend year possible but for me it was a no spend year that I had my rules to whereas if it was a low spend that's too gray area for me 
I needed it to be very black and white. Can buy this, can't buy this, can buy this, can't buy this. Um, so while it's a no spend, it's no spending on anything that's not pre-agreed on my list. Um, that I, if I hadn't thought of it when I wrote the list, and obviously I could have written stuff on this list throughout the year, if things had cropped up, I'd have jotted down a note and I didn't, I didn't add anything, I've taken away. And um, so this is nothing that, nothing that really, in 12 months, there's nothing that's cropped up that I hadn't thought about in advance that I need to live life. Um, live life, love. Um, yeah, there's nothing, nothing that needed to be different than needed to be on there, so. I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, I prefer the term, personally, I prefer the term no spend rules. Um, but you need to do what's right for you. Maybe have a look at how someone that's done low spend rules has worked theirs and um, different ways of reducing it. I mean, I've gone fairly hardcore last this last year and I plan to be equally hardcore. And there haven't been too many complicated conversations with people um, about not, doing stuff and I think most people at the moment appreciate like a discounted way of doing things um, and this will be something I also touch on in the in the book review so if you're in the membership my book review for um the book club one we've just been doing the no spend year and um, she talks about how in there it was hard to like get her friends to to go and do the free activities with her but she wrote that in 2016 and uh, well her no spend year was 2016 um, and I think I feel like I've said the wrong year. It was about then. Um, and it's actually, I think the world has shifted a lot and more people appreciate someone coming up with a free idea to do socially. Um, I think whether you are financially struggling or not, everyone is a lot more aware of needing bigger nest eggs than we ever thought we needed to have a lower bare bones baseline that they know they can drop down to um if needs be and things um so that I think has probably shifted since from when she wrote the book to um doing this past year um we've got some lovely walking routes from here as well so when I have seen people going walk from there or just having people around because people then I have not liked to leave in the house very much um which has been really nice too, like just having people around and eat some food. I had two friends around one day and we made banoffee pie and then only one of them was staying to eat it anyway because they had to go before it was finished. But um, we had such a giggle, such a giggle making this <laughs> vegan banoffee pie from scratch. Um, and we had so much fun doing it. And um, that was one of my things at the beginning of the year. I kind of, I really wanted to learn to make a few more desserts. So I have a couple more now in my back pocket that I can pull out. I have a crumble, a banoffee pie, and a chocolate mousse cheesecake thing. I haven't perfected the base on that one yet, but I'm, I'm very happy to keep practicing because well, it's chocolate mousse. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had a good laugh doing that as well. So I think there's, it's just changing your mindset of that everything you do with someone else has to be something that costs money, that you have to go out for a coffee or you have to meet here for this and meet that for that. And I'm just like, mm, just coffee. It's fine. I think a lot of people would find that harder because they're like, ah, my house needs to be tidy, but I, I like my house tidy all the time. So it's fine. So not the cause problem anyway if you've got any questions or comments then do feel free to put them down in the comments below or shoot me a message um i have really enjoyed it overall i think it has been really nice to have that gamification element to it and what turned out to be like of all the years i could have done this this was probably the most perfect year to be spending as little as possible because there's certainly been as little as possible coming in and um, so it, it, it kind of whether I had set this up as a plan or not probably would have had to have spent like this so to have that choice at the beginning to have made that decision prior to it sort of being forced upon me um was really really nice to have that kind of control and um, so I think it's it's something you can do at any point but it's particularly beneficial to do when you have a choice not to um 
but having that challenge has also made it easier to talk to people about um I definitely feel like there's less stigma when you're doing a challenge now it shouldn't necessarily be that way I don't think it should I should have to do a challenge to have less stigma about trying to spend less money and be less consumeristic but it's like people don't it's like they can't compute it otherwise sometimes um it would be like why why did you do that um but if there's a challenge then it feels um poop or whatever and um, so I I definitely enjoyed that aspect of it and talking to people about it and um, because it's it's like got a fun name um and now I know it's a natural thing and there are books about it and stuff that I can talk about as well so that has certainly been an interesting part of the journey too and um, so like I said give me a, a shout or a comment if you have any questions about it and um, if you are in the membership, then do go, I will put it up in a minute and um, go check out the download section and I will pop a copy of this in there. I can't remember which folder I'm going to put it in. It will be in there. You know what I'm like, the folder labelling is very obvious for what's going to be in each one. I keep confusing the camera by putting the white thing in front of my face. <laughs> Keeps changing the lighting, keeps adjusting. Um, sorry, camera. Um, but yeah, I'll put that copy in there. So if you want to go and get some inspiration, but um, I will probably do a couple more like little spontaneous ones like this that are um, going to go up on YouTube. I used to do a lot of YouTube videos and I just, I don't, I don't have the inclination to do it anymore, but um, from time to time, it's nice to share a bit of just life with you. Um, without it being like a whole workshop and things which is so workshops and masterclasses is normal what I'm on camera for now so have an amazing day I will see you soon and ta -ta for now. if you want to be happy it's gonna have to be a lifestyle switch and if you want to be happy you're gonna have to do the work in deep Quick fixes become better diets to take back your time and live your life for you. Cause if you wanna be happy, it's gonna have to be a lifestyle switch.